This is the full metal jacket round. I'm gonna fire from a kneeling position so that I'm straighter on to the target. So what do we get? We got a hole, right? Nice little entry hole. Didn't move the jug a whole bunch. We got a decent exit wound. Exit wounds are always bigger than entry wounds because they're bringing a pressure wave with them on that. So that's what we got here. Jug still bleeding out, All right? So now we move on to a good carry round. Lot more movement, right? Jug's done bleeding out. Energy transfer, right? If you were paying attention, you saw the bullet impact behind them. Very similar entry wounds, but the exit wounds change drastically, right? And this isn't flesh, this isn't a uh, ballistic gel demonstration. This is just an idea of energy being transferred. So now we're gonna run the AR-15 with a 5.56 round, also known as a 223. The difference between those two designations are not important for what we're doing here. So here is my full metal jacket rifle round. This will be considerably louder. Energy transfer, right? And now the good carry round. Energy transfer. Making sense? I think we can see the issue, right? And doing that, much greater transfer of that energy from that round designed to expand and open up. So now we're gonna run some double op buck. So double op buck round from a shotgun. Slug round from a shotgun. Carry round from the nine millimeter does a really good job of causing a bigger wound channel. And that's what you're looking at to stop a threat. A dedicated attacker is going to need to be injured to the point that they can't continue that attack against you. The reason we run these other weapons is there is a big difference in an easy to carry pistol and the energy it can provide me in a lethal confrontation. Totally effective, but I gotta pick the right ammo and I gotta do my job. Because comparing the full metal jacket impact of that pistol to any of those other rounds out here is a considerable difference in doing that. Those full metal jacket practice rounds should never be carried for defensive purposes. That's not what they're for. You got a zombie apocalypse, the rules change, right? But that's not where we're at right now. We're in a non-zombie apocalypse with a lot of attorneys who are gonna sue the crap out of you for negligence if you don't make good decisions in what you're doing. As you move up in energy from the other weapons, you could tell that the rifle was much louder, right? Why? More gunpowder, it's burning a lot more gunpowder, right? And then the shotgun, if you saw me shooting it, moved, right, with the shotgun, why? It's a lot of energy, because the amount of energy I'm sending that way is equal to the amount of energy coming back at me. So the more energy my weapon's capable of firing, the harder it's gonna push back against me, the slower my rate of fire is gonna be. I can shoot that rifle a heck of a lot faster than I can shoot that shotgun. And I can even shoot the pistol a lot faster than I can shoot that shotgun because I don't have to recover from such massive recoil on it. I show you this in big changes because when you come back to the pistol world, the same thing applies. Carrying a weapon that is too large of a caliber for you to handle isn't the best idea because any follow-up shots I make are gonna be much slower. So I wanna carry the largest caliber that I'm capable of handling well as a novice. And then as I get better, I'm gonna refine what I wanna carry. I would tell you that nine millimeter and 40 are basically the calibers you should be looking at for defensive carry purposes. If you just can't handle that, moving down to the 380 is acceptable, but you are giving a lot of energy up when you move to the 380. You're going to about 200 foot pounds of energy out of that round instead of what you were getting in the nine and the 40, which was a little over 300 and then about 400 in the 40. So you just have to make those decisions for yourself. But a gun that you don't like to shoot because it recoils too hard and you can't control it, isn't a gun you're gonna practice with and it's not a gun you're gonna carry. So you gotta find that happy space that gets you to do what you need to do when you're trying to protect yourself out there.